This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. Break number one. Break number two. Break number three. Break number four. We are back home now. Let's take a look at the result. So you see, this time the SR Plus was the best in the test so far. The shortest braking distance, really impressive. Uh, one weird thing is the slope here is minus 8%. Great, that's massive. No, that can't be right. You can see on the on the footage that the video, on, uh, according to the video, it's nice, fairly nice and flat there. So uh, most tests I do, we have roughly just maybe 1% grade and 8%. That's no, that's way too much. Uh, the battery on the Draghi was a bit low. I'm not sure if it has anything to do with that one, uh, but it's still, uh, if you compare the footage of the braking itself versus other cars, you will see that this one has really really short stopping distance uh, and also why did the model uh, 3 uh, SR plus win there maybe because the weight is lower see that 1860 versus now so that's um, 120 kilos more on the long range because you have uh, more well, we have dual motor and stuff uh, but I still feel like okay um, the Falcon is very good but if you put the Falcon on the on the long range it will probably be slightly worse than the PS4 uh, PS4 here Michelin PS4 is still outstanding when it comes to performance and then when it comes to noise you see for the longest time I've been using the right lane when I measure noise on the same stretch same direction but then I suspected that that lane tends to be a bit worn down and nowadays when I test cars I feel like hey this seems to be quiet but then when I go on the test stretch it turns out it's noisier than I thought but um, uh, so what I did was that I tried to measure the noise level on the right lane like I always do but then I also do a, a test on the left lane in the different speeds and you see there's a result here is that um, let me see. Yeah, we're uh, the, the top here. This is the left lane, and then the bottom here is the right lane. And you see, we have actually two decibel difference. I had no idea it was that much. I was thinking maybe a half decibel or one decibel, but two decibel is quite noticeable. So, which means that. Uh, all the other tests I've done so far, you know, the, the, as we go further and further uh, on the on the same asphalt, the the result or uh, well, the result became, becomes worse and worse, and the, each car becomes noisier and noisier. But of course, quiet cars they will still be quiet, like like EQC or e-tron or whatever. But uh, <laughs> actually, that might explain why this one here. You see, we tried the EQS; it was really quiet but it was done recently let's say it was done around six months ago whereas the e-tron was done roughly two years ago and over two years lots and lots of cars and trucks and, and also Norway cars with um, studded tires they wear down the road and that's why you know I wonder so when you look here two decibel difference is it 68.5 or okay let me just uh, try here so if you look at this one uh, 70 point uh, five roughly then it comes around here along with uh, 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 other Teslas and Cooper and Kona but if we look at the 68.6 instead then how high do we have to go then 68.6 here uh, eSoul ID3 you see suddenly we can compare to some German cars like ID3 Nissan Leaf is uh, considered fairly quiet and then it turns out to be more quiet than Polestar. Well, it appears to be more quiet or quiet than the Polestar. But remember, the Polestar was also done recently. So, what the heck are we supposed to do now? Should we start using the left lane? I think so, because the right lane is not representative for, for the majority of the roads around here anymore. It was okay back in the days. So, yeah, uh, I mean, what, what I need to do is that I need to have a reference uh, point something. Um, this is really hard because I can't, first of all, I don't have a lab. 
to test this <laughs> you know i don't have a a, a tesla beyond uh, 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 testing ground proving ground <laughs> that would be awesome uh, because then i can control the environment i will then be able to not you know wear it down too much but um, we have to test on public roads that's the whole point of my test if you guys notice i always test on public roads i don't do any lab test um, and the same thing goes for the noise test uh, what we could do is we could have a reference test. Uh, first, we need to have a reference car that I never changed. This car, I will keep it, this is a Model 3 performance, by the way, I will keep it maybe for a month and then I change it. And then I borrow from Marcus B a lot. So that's not gonna work. But Millen Falcon could be the reference car because I will never sell him. I will keep him forever. So there we have the reference car. Uh, and also I have to make sure I don't make any modification on Millen Falcon. Uh, but that's actually there was a problem with triangle window I'm leaking some noise and whatever uh, there's some draft coming from that one so we have to fix that one okay anyway <laughs> long story short we can use millennium falcon as the pre reference car and then oh by the way for you guys who don't know millennium falcon is a, a model s p85 from 2013 the first tesla i own and then we need to have um, a reference tire. <laughs> so now it becomes tricky because I then need a reference tire that I almost never use, but I tend to use the car anyway. And then it depends on season, summer, winter. Of course, we can put on winter tires and drive them all year round, but that's also not optimal. As you guys have seen in the test here, winter tires seems to, uh, or actually it's quite clear that winter tires breaks way worse than summer tires during summer. Um, but I don't want to make this too complicated. So I could have a winter, no, I, I'm not sure how to do this, but I could use a tire on Millen Falcon. And then I can, I have an idea because somewhere near that stretch and uh, near Klofta on the old road with A zone, we have very little traffic there. Trucks, they generally don't drive there because they drive on the main road, the, the testing stretch that I use. So we could use that one as the reference stretch because it will probably take many, many years before that stretch wears down. Uh, and then I can use that one as a reference, but then I have to start correcting against the asphalt I'm testing on. So you see, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm kind of lost here right now, but uh, uh, it's quite clear that we can't keep using the right lane because it's way too rough and it gives gives the result or the, the, it skews the result and it changes over time too much. So we probably have to, um, yeah, I have to figure out something. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do, but uh, now you guys know that uh, actually you can say that the the noise test, uh, it, you can't trust it 100%. It's more like a guideline, but like you guys have seen, Fat Etron and EQS they, and ES8, they are still the most quiet ones. And then some of the ones, but the, you don't, you know, there, there's a little bit of measurement error here, uh, maybe just one to two decibel uh, that much. So, uh, but anyway, um, I think I'm just gonna end here and I maybe take some advice from you guys. Uh, but remember that I will not make it too complicated. We have to keep it as simple as possible, kiss. So, uh, yes, I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.